All right, now let's say, for example, you know, once you, uh, if, if you've got a scenario where you know how many BTU you need, uh, y'all remember that first calculation that you did where how many BTUs is required to raise a certain uh, amount of a substance so many degrees? When you know that, when you know how many BTU you're going to need, you can come in here and look at this pressure entropy diagram uh, and you can determine the, the capacity of a refrigeration system that you need. You know, you can determine the capacity and how many BTUs per pound of refrigerant, you know, are going to be removed. You add that up. You know, you might need a, a system with a 6 pound of refrigerant, 10 pounds of refrigerant, 50 pounds of refrigerant. So this is what the engineer uses to help them design the system. So we'll uh, move on to the next slide. And of course, we're kind of rushing through this because we've got a, another lecture coming up. And this is what I was telling you about, about the, the saturated lines. All right, now, what does saturated liquid mean? Um, and and uh, you, you remember when we talked about the definitions that you use and the terminology and, and knowing the definitions of these terms uh, in refrigeration, that's really important. You know, subcooling, what is liquid subcooling? You know, where is it at in the system? Why is it important? How do you measure it? Uh, superheat, what is superheat in, in, in the, the refrigeration system? Where does it take place? How do you measure it? Why is it important? All right, the saturated liquid, my, de my understanding of the saturated liquid is that's the point in the system uh, where you've got 100% liquid. All the vapor that's going to uh, uh, condense has condensed. Uh, and you've got no more heat to be rejected in the form of latent heat. And remember, latent heat is a really powerful amount of, of heat. I mean, it, it, it's a powerful force that occurs when that refrigerant is changing states. From vapor to liquid, liquid to vapor. All right, it's changing from vapor to liquid in the condenser side. And, and these uh, lines here on the pressure entropy chart are called uh, lines of quality. What does that mean? That quality is adding up to the saturated liquid, which is what you want. That's the best quality that you can have. Why is it good quality? You've got to have 100% liquid entering your metering device. If you don't, you're starting out. It's like you know, starting a race where you, <laughs> your engine's skipping and cutting out. Your engine's not running right, you know, and then you're fixing to have a drag race. So you need 100% liquid entering that meter device. This is the type of thing that you know that you can use the pressure entropy chart to uh, you know to measure. So this uh, saturated liquid line is over here, and of course you're going to have a, um, a condensing temperature, and that's going to be the highest uh, the highest pressure. You take your high your discharge pressure, and you convert that to temperature. That's the temperature at which this refrigerant is condensing. And these lines of quality tells you where it's at in, in the condensing stage. Uh, now, uh, when, when it gets over here to this line, you want 100% liquid um, coming out of the bottom of that condenser or near the end of that condenser, and then you want some subcooling on top of that. Uh, and, you know, if you understand subcooling, the importance of subcooling, you can understand the pressure entropy chart and how subcooling plays a role. Um, so we'll move on, and the other slide talks about the, um, the vapor, 100% vapor. That occurs in your evaporator. So you see that you've got your, what's happening in the, in the evaporator is over here on, on this side. And of course these, you know, percent lines is percent vapor. Uh, and again, the pressure empty diagram, it's, it's a graphical representation of what's happening inside that vapor compression refrigeration system. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, state of refrigerant, percent of vapor, we've already talked about that. Um, Alright, let's say for example, let's say for example you got a system that's, uh, you know, when, when, when you get over here you never achieve 100% liquid. Let's say when that refrigerant is going through your liquid line, entering the metering device, let's say you've got 80% liquid, 20% vapor. Let's say it never, it never gets beyond this line here. You know, what does that tell you? You've got condenser problems, your system's not charged properly. 
so you know that that tells you how important having that hundred percent liquid is in in that system. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, hundred percent liquid condition, um, and of course we've talked about that. We'll move on to the next slide. Fifty percent liquid, fifty percent vapor, and this is occurs in about halfway in, in your condenser. Uh, or you could say that it's occurring uh, halfway in your uh, evaporator. You got half liquid, half vapor. The job is not done. Now, if you never, if you never proceed beyond that point, you got problems in your system. Something's not right. Uh, so you know that that kind of the pressure entropy diagram helps us to understand the concept of what's happening inside the system. Let's move on. 100% uh, vapor, uh, you want 100% vapor exiting that evaporator. Uh, what, what happens in this refrigerant? Alright, it's over here, it's uh, on, on this side of the chart, it's rejecting heat out of, out of the refrigerant in the uh, condenser. You come up here to the peak, your peak discharge pressure, uh, and then as that goes through your meter device, somewhere, uh, somewhere right in here, depending on if you have a 40 degree evaporator, uh, you know, this is where the refrigerant is going in. It, this is where it enters the metering device, enters the uh, evaporator. Um, as it goes into the evapor evaporator, that's why you have a, a, a box. That's why you have a, a box that um, that looks, well, you know, we'll, we'll just come over here. That's why you have a box that looks a little like this here. Um, because I didn't draw that right, but this is going to be your, you know, your superheat range. Um, and, well, not superheat, but this is going to be where, when the refrigerant enters the metering device, it begins to. You have a drastic change in temperature. All right, let's say this is the liquid coming into the metering device here. Uh, immediately, you you have a, a drastic drop in pressure, and you also have a drop in temperature. This, this, is, this is why the box has two lines, the line at the top, the line at the bottom. You have a drastic change in pressure and temperature. Let's say you might go from 105 degree uh, liquid down to 40 degree liquid. That's a big drop. You also have a big pressure drop. So in the process of this, uh, in, in this drastic change, all of a sudden, as the refrigerant goes through the metering device, uh, you're going to have some flashing that occurs. Um, and that's, what's we, that's what we call splash gas or adiabatic expansion. What is adiabatic expansion? It's the phenomenon of the refrigerant removing heat from its own cell and no real enthalpy is gained or lost. No net refrigeration effect is gained or lost. Uh, and you always have, like on average, uh, as that refrigerant changes uh, pressure and temperature as it passes through the metering device, you have about 80% liquid entering, uh, about 75% liquid that's entering the uh, evaporator, and then 25% vapor, is, which is what it costs to change the temperature of this um, liquid refrigerant from 105, 110 down to 40, or whatever this, this uh, scenario might be. So that 25% vapor is your flashing that occurs, and that's where you don't have really that you don't have any net refrigeration effect. That's why you have a straight line here as it goes down, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't really change anything. No no enthalpy, no uh, net refrigeration effect. Is that making any sense? Okay, now let's go on to the next slide where they'll... Okay, refrigerant temperature, and uh, of course, you know, they, they show the temperature of the refrigerant, which all that is is a conversion of your pressure and your temperature. Now, a regular pressure temperature chart uses uh, gauge pressure and not absolute pressure. So, you know, you would still have to, uh, you know, the, this would not be a true pressure temperature chart because this is absolute, and you would have to convert that back to gauge pressure, and then your temperature would match up for the, you know, your pressure temperature diagram. So basically, the pressure entropy diagram is is sort of a 
a pressure temperature chart. You could use it as a pressure temperature chart. But your horizontal lines are your, um, your pressure as well as your temperature because there's a direct correlation between the two. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, now, outside of this curve, this is, this is where your, uh, your pressures are, are going up and down and your refrigerant is going through the various phases of change. When you get outside of the, the bell, it's really not a bell curve. You can call it a bell curve. When you get outside of your uh, your curve, you know the temperature goes up instead of uh, vertical. And you know that's just the that's just the way the chart is, is is designed. But really, you know the most important part here is what's happening in the cur in the curve from saturated liquid saturated vapor. That's where the work is being done in your condenser and in your evaporator. Um, but anyway, that's what this is. And outside of the curve, um, the lines of quality curve or the saturation curve, your temperature lines change. Alright, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, constant entropy BTU per pound uh, the entropy is what, like I said, the entropy is a ratio of your volume uh, and, you know, the amount of heat contained uh, in, in that volumetric ratio, if that makes any sense. Now, when would a technician need to know this? Well, you know, I worked for, I worked at the service tech for several years and I, I never encountered a scenario where I needed to know the, the constant entropy. But, you know, having a basic understanding of the pressure entropy diagram 